Okay, I'm recording about three sessions at one time. So, and packing for Dade Battlefield reenactment this weekend. So, no green screen. I'm moving things around here in the room. Oh, so, anyway, this is the most interesting letter I have of the family. Now, if, uh, so let me stop this. Uh, a long time ago, there's a book published on one of the survivors of Dade Battle, uh, Private Joseph Sprague of Vermont, uh, the last soldier survivor of Dade's massacre in Florida by Nathan White. And this is 1981. So over 40 years ago, <laughs> hard to believe. Now, this is an interesting letter because I found this letter in the adjutant general letters from uh, private private Joseph Sprague himself. So it says uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, September 22nd, 1842. Joseph Sprague, Private Company F, 6th Infantry, applies for discharge, refers to his promise of General Scott in relation to a pension to be laid before the general, uh, R.J., that's Roger Jones, the Army Adjutant General, October 14th, 13th, 1842. So this, uh, two months after the Second Seminole War ended, says this application for discharge is respectfully recommended to the favorable consideration of the Major General Commanding, uh, J.D. Seawright, Captain Commanding Company F, 6th Infantry. It says approved. And the signature of Zachary Taylor, Brevet Brigadier General, U.S. Army Commanding, Headquarters, 2nd Department, Fort Smith, Arkansas, September 23rd, 1842. It says, and under that written real light, it says I concur in the above and consider the this paper signed and recommended by Brigadier General Taylor and Captain Seawright, a sufficient certificate of indisability, let the soldier be discharged. Signature, Winfield Scott, his signature's on there, it's very faint, October 18th, 1842. And go to the next page, and this is the letter. I'm not sure if Joseph Sprague wrote this or if somebody wrote it for him but it's actually very nice very good penmanship it's easy to read it says fort smith arkansas september 22nd 1842 so over a month after the second seminal war ended writing to his captain captain i most respectfully request that you'll favor me with your assistance to procure my discharge from the u.s service and beg leave to submit to you the grounds upon which I make the application. I have now been a soldier in the Army of the United States for upwards of 22 years. Now, look carefully, it does say 22 years, but the dates don't add up, as you'll see here. During that period, I have encountered many hardships and privations while discharging my duty. Whilst young and healthy, I encountered them cheerfully and bore them patiently. But I have now reached an age at which such things press more heavily on me than when I was endowed with youth and vigor wherewith to meet the trials of a soldier's life. And it says here I was active in, I'm sorry, it, I was in active service during the whole of the late war with Great Britain, and my services during that period are well known to several officers of, of distinction among whom I would mention Major General Scott, the President Commander-in-Chief. At a later day, I did field duty of the most arduous kind for a long time in Florida. And so if that's true, if there's no break in service, he's been in the Army for 30 years. If he says he's been during the whole of the late war with Great Britain, that's the War of 1812. So he's actually been in 30 years, and uh, according to Frank Walmer and his list of Dade's men, let's say he was 32, and I don't think he joined the Army at 10 years old. 
So unless there is a break in service, uh, I mean, this is, this is uh, definitely a retirement age for those in the service. And here he continuing, he says, I was in the territory when the Seminole Wars commenced and was one of the com that command who marched with the late Major Dade to the field on which Major and all save three of his command perished. Of the three who escaped from that massacre, I was one. Since that time, I've been with hardly any intermission in the service of the U.S. I have participated in all the earlier and most trying campaigns in Florida, and I believe that the officers of the 6th Regiment who know me will acknowledge that I bore at least my share of the operations of a more recent date. So, very interesting. Not only was he with Major Dade's command, but he says he was with the early operations in Florida, you know, at least through uh, part of the war here. I now, after 22 years of service, find my constitution so much broken and enfeebled that I am unable to discharge my duty as a soldier without considerable physical suffering. I should uh, add here that he's in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So like the Seminoles, he ended up in Indian Territory himself. I would request a favor that the captain will examine the papers which I possess as proof of my long servitude. And I also state to the captain that the previous to my joining the 6th Infantry, I was told by Major General Scott that when active operations in Florida should have ceased, I may, my, might make application for a pension in considering of my long and faithful service and that my claim should not be overlooked. <laughs> now, why does he have to wait till the war is ended to put in for his pension being one of the three survivors from Major Dade's command? That's awful. <laughs> That's awful strange. Uh, anyway, uh, what an interesting life he must have led in the War of 1812 and then with Major Dade's command with some of the early campaigns and now in Indian ter territory out west. If only we had more accounts written by him or uh, information that he had gave. You know, there's, I saw a talk the other day about a movie of a Revolutionary War figure that's being made that they're embellishing it. They're almost making it sound like the guy was a superhero. Well, uh, history is more interesting that you don't have to make anything up. And if there's any hero, uh, this guy's it, you know, with, I'd be willing to hear his story. I mean, it, we know about Frank Warmer, but sounds like this guy w had more years in service than, uh, than uh, Ransom Clark that Frank Warmer wrote about. Uh, Ransom Clark was uh, one of the other survivors. So we have three survivors, John Thomas and who survived uh, that I mentioned in one of the earlier letters. He uh, paid $6 uh, for one of the Indians to let him free. And he died, I think, about 1839, 1840 in Palatka. You have Ransom Clark, who we know full well. Uh, Frank Lommer's written extensively about him. And in fact, Frank Lommer died on the same month and day that Ransom Clark died in November, uh, which is quite a coincidence there. I've been to Ransom Clark's grave up in uh, New York State, uh, not far from uh, Rochester. And now the third soldier who survived is uh, Joseph Sprague. And we have very little information. Uh, what we know about him is after uh, the war ended, apparently he settled in the uh, uh, near High Springs, Florida. He apparently had a land grant and owned some land and lived his uh, remaining few years out in, back in Florida territory. And we've also mentioned about uh, Louis Pacheco. I think I recently did a video on him. So uh, we've gone over accounts of the four survivors, the three soldiers and the one uh, black interpreter, Louis Pacheco. 
So I think I think that covers it pretty well. And I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you later. Oh, gotta push push the button.